Hey everyone, Lee here. Today we are making the 8 Balls Monkey's Fist. This is one of the nicest things I've ever made with paracord. I promise you will not be disappointed when you are finished. The supplies you are going to need starting with cord length is 30 foot of 550 paracord, 11 foot of 550 paracord, and lastly 12 foot of 550 paracord. In this video you will see me use a knotter stool, fid, and hemostats. If you don't have a knotter stool or hemostats, just a fid and needle nose pliers should get you by. I use an S beaner to finish the end of my monkey's fist, but any type of ring or carabiner will be sufficient. Everything I just listed will be down in the description. A few things such as the jig I used, an affordable A ball, and my Discord server will be down in the description as well. Let's begin. Okay, so I've got my jig set up here, and I've got my A ball slid in, got it to the right size. And as you can see here on the A ball, it's a little yellow. That's because it sat in a shed for a little while, and it was a very old and used A ball, but it's still in good condition. And once we wrap it in cord, you won't be able to see it. All right, so I got my paracord here, and we're gonna measure out about five feet on our lead strand. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, right here where you measured out five feet, go ahead and tie an overhand knot. So that's basically just tying a shoelace knot. So over here, as you can see, it looks just like so. All right, we're gonna slide this on behind the eight ball. And this is the top of my uh, jig. So as you can see, this is pretty much the, I guess you could say top left post right here. All right, so that's what we're gonna do is tie it on the top left one and tighten that down. So this is the majority of our cord right here, and this is our five feet strand going off to the left. This will be for the handle and the length of the monkey's fist, and the majority of our cords are here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do 11 passes, because this eight ball is 11 pass monkey's fist. So what I mean by 11 passes, we're gonna wrap it around 11 times, like so. And make sure you evenly stack it, and not overlapping, like so. We wanna keep it next to each other, all the way around. And if it, go, if it starts going past your rod here, just slide it back some and maybe even slide your uh, eight ball in a little further. Okay, and once you've finished wrapping all the way around, let's go ahead and verify we have 11 passes. So starting from the left, going to the right, go ahead and count, make sure you have 11 passes. And also make sure that your eight ball is centered under the cord. All right, so once you verify that you have 11 passes, we can go ahead and begin the next step. All right, so with this being my top right here, I'll go ahead and show you. All I did was take the paracord and cross it over to the left. All right, and let's slide that back down there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start wrapping around this way, because we, we just went around this way, and now we're gonna go around the side of the eight ball. So the side that's exposed on either side, okay? So coming across this side, come around here, and around the back. and around the front again. And you're just gonna keep going around the side, like so, keeping it evenly stacked all the way around and doing another 11 passes. I forgot to mention, when wrapping around the side, keeping it around, don't do it too tight because we don't want to squish it down super tight around here. We wanna keep it nice and loose just like we did to begin with and keeping it nice and even. Once you have finished wrapping around all four sides, go ahead and check around each of them, making sure none of the cord overlapped and none of it was too tight. Okay, and once you finish that, you can go ahead and untie our overhand knot over here. Go ahead and untie that and get it out of the way. I'll show you what I mean by that once I untie it. So we're just going to take that and just stick it over off to the left out of the way. So it was going over our top right here, but we're just going to move it out of the way over here. All right. Now with our lead strand, our main cord, we're going to go ahead and connect the end of that to a fid. Okay, now back to our other side, our main weaving strand. I went ahead and connected a fid to it to go ahead and proceed on with the next step. All right, so this was my top, which is the side that had the knot around it. So the knot was right here with this strand, which we moved out of the way. So this is my top, and I've just got my cord on that bottom right rod right there. So this is my top left rod. This is my bottom right rod. All right, so we're going to take that with our fid and just go straight down through there. And you can pick up your jig and kind of make sure that you're not going to pierce into the paracord when going through here and go all the way through to the other side. All right, and just pull that all the way through. And keep pulling until it's nice and snug up against the monkey's fist. All right, you wanna keep that on top of the rod where it was and make sure it doesn't overlap our cord. So just like so. Okay, and so with that same strand, we're gonna go over the top of this cord right here. Oh, covered it up there. Go over the top of this cord right here, 
and up through our top on the same side. So we went down right here, and now we're just going up through our top, just like so. All right, you're gonna pull that tight. Or nice and snug, not too tight anyway. Just to get it enough to touch up against there. Okay, so all we did was go down through our bottom and it went across the bottom one, up along this side and then along the top. So now we're back down at the bottom where we begun. So go ahead and just keep doing that until we get 11 passes all the way around. And yeah. Okay, now once you verify that there is 11 passes on the front side and our back side, you can go ahead and remove it from the jig. So just gently slide it off of the front and we can move our jig out of the way. Forgot to mention before I took it off the jig, as you can see, this is where, this was our starting cord when we first started the monkey assist. And as I did my 11 passes, I just came out the bottom, this was the front of it. So this was the bottom left and they are just across from each other like so with 11 passes on the side and 11 passes on the side. Okay, from here, we're gonna go ahead and start by cinching up the monkey fist because it is very loose, as you can see. And I like to do three passes, sometimes four passes of tightening up. But when you're tightening it up, you don't wanna get it extremely tight on the first pass. Even sometimes, even on the second pass, you wanna just not get it extremely tight, but get it nice and snug. Okay, so just meet both your cords up at the very end and see which one's shorter. This was my shorter cord, so we're gonna start with that one. So I'm gonna actually bring it through here just a little bit. Not too much because it's already going to be a lot of slack. All right, so we're just going to start cinching it up. And if you've never cinched up a monkey's fist before, it can be quite hard at first, especially um, going back in the wrong direction over and over. So just keep the uh, cords that you're doing facing that you're just make sure you're coming towards yourself and you'll have it even all the way around. All right, so we're just going to start by cinching this up and just pulling from side to side. And like I mentioned before, don't get it extremely tight on your first go around. You just want to get it nice and you just want it to touch. The monkey's fist that's all and just continue doing this all the way down and just keep working the slack okay once you've made your way to the end so i still got it facing towards me we're going to go ahead and you're going to figure out that it's going to go ahead and start on a different angle. So just go ahead and pull this one through. And we're going to start coming towards ourselves again. Okay. So we're going to pull this tight right here. Oh, it's up top. And these edge ones, the ones on the edge, as you can see, has a loop going down and behind this. You want to get those, you don't want to get these as tight as the rest because it will, you can get one too tight and the other one not tight enough because it ends up pulling all these together. So we just want to get that one just slightly tight okay so right about there keep cinching it up and bringing it towards yourself and down to the end you're just going to keep doing this process over and over throughout the whole monkey's fist and you're going to do this at least um two or three times now when you're doing it just make sure they stay evenly stacked all the way along the sides as you can see they're pretty even right now. And because, you know, sometimes when you pull it down, I'll show you here. Sometimes when you pull it down, it'll want to stay on the top. Just make sure it gets down in that groove. And just keep going towards yourself until you get to the end. All right, so once again, we made our way down here to the end. And so we're switching sides. So we're just going to do this, get that right up against it, and proceed on with the next side. And remember, don't get the edge ones too tight because we don't want to bunch all of these together. So just get it right up against the cord. All right, I'm gonna flip this around and keep coming towards myself until I finish. All right, so I made my way down here to the end and just pull out through that other last strand, like so. All right, so then what you'll do is you'll just match up both of these strands again, whichever one's shorter. You'll start with that uh, that one and do it another, I don't know, two times at least. And just remember not to get it too tight on that second time. And the third time, then you can really start getting them tight around that eight ball. All right, but yeah, that's how you cinch up a monkey's fist. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that at least another two times. And we should be able to move on to the next step. All right, so once you're done cinching up your monkey's fist and are happy with the way it looks, we can go ahead and tie our diamond knot. So I got a scrap piece here to make it a little easier on showing how to tie it. So 
picture this as being your monkey's fist. So I'm gonna bring it up through my finger. So behind my finger, this loop is our monkey's fist, all right? So tying this diamond knot, we're gonna pretty much, just like turning a key inside of a car, you're just gonna twist it and it's gonna loop over itself. That should look like this, okay? So all you're doing is you're twisting and it's looping over itself, just like so. And this is just our right strand. Okay, now with our left, we're gonna place that uh, loop over our left strand. And now with our left strand, we're gonna come behind our right strand and go over, under, over. So what I mean by that is we're gonna go over our loop right here. So over, under our left strand, and back up over our left side loop. Okay, so you should have something that looks just like this. And remember, these two strands coming out as our monkey's fist. Now taking that right strand, we're gonna come around behind and behind this left strand, so this left strand right here, take our right strand, come behind it, and up through our center gap right here, okay? So behind it and up through here. And then same with our left strand, come behind that right strand out my, coming out of my fingers. You're gonna come behind it, trying to, don't let this slip back through. So we'll come behind it, and up through that center gap. All right, and that's how you tie it. So then you'll cinch it up, which this one got a little bit crazy on me. But basically you'll just work all of the slack through. So you can get it tight as you can right now, actually. And then you'll just work the slack through, getting it nice and tight. All right, there you go. It should look just like this on your monkey's fist. Hope you're able to tie that. If you have any trouble tying it, just let me know in the comments and I'll try and try and help you out. But yeah, so it should look just like this right here on our monkey's fist. Now, if it is your first time ever tying a diamond knot, it might be easier to practice with a scrap piece just like I did there uh, before tying it on here because it is a little bit hard with these strands being so wide tying, uh, tying it. So as you can see, when you tie it, it's gonna be kind of high, or even if you had it a little closer, you want it to be right up against the monkey's fist. You want it to be, these. you want these strands to be even on either side, and you want it to right up against the monkey's fist, just like that. So let's take this. And so basically how you do that is you just take the strand, let's see, let's find which one it is. And we're just gonna pull this, and we're gonna pull it through. And that just brings it closer to the monkey's fist, okay? And then you'll just keep working the slack through until it comes out the top. I'll show you here. As you can see, just like that, it came out the top. So now we're already closer on one side. So then we just do the same thing to the other side. Taking that other strand, finding where it comes out, which is right here. We're gonna pull that a little closer and just keep going until this is right up against it. And you wanna get it nice and tight, just like I had that scrap piece. Okay, and when you've almost got it and you think that you're right there, go ahead and give it a nice tug. And as you can see, it ends up stretching the cord a little bit and tightens up our knot. So now you can see there's actually quite a bit bigger gap than there just was. So you keep doing that and tightening it up like that because as you're holding onto the handle, once we do that, it's gonna end up stretching this out and there's gonna be a gap here anyway. So get it as close as possible, tighten, uh, tighten it up pull, by pulling these strands and keep doing that until it gets right snug up against the monkey fist. Also, one more thing, as you're doing this, it might get tight and be hard to use your fingers to pull it through. So using a fid or an otter's tool might help you be able to get it nice and snug up against that monkey's fist. So yeah, just carry on with what you're doing and until you get it all the way up against here. All right, and once you get that as tight as you um, want it or as tight as you can get it, which is this is pretty much as tight as I can get mine because the this is so tight, I could barely get my knotter's tool in there without piercing the cord. So that's about as, as close as mine's gonna get right there. So we can go ahead and get our other color now. So let's just separate these from left to right. And now, you just wanna get your other color and go ahead and find your center point. So by taking both your ends, just slide your fingers through it and that'll give you your center point right there. All right, just go ahead and then place that in the center with uh, one going off to the left and one going off to the right. So the one going off to the left is gonna be on the top and the one going off to the right is gonna be on the bottom. So you should be able to hold it just like this, okay? Now what you wanna do is you wanna take your strand that you made your monkey fist out of, so that is my black with acid purple, we're gonna take that and the bottom one, which is this one on the left, 
is going to go over the one on the right. Okay, so just slide them from one side to the other. There you go. And now, as you can see, we got a loop around our purple there. Okay, so then we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time, since we did our black last time, we're going to go ahead and start with our acid purple. So taking that bottom one and going over the top of the purple one, like so, just crossing them right over. So all you're doing is just gonna, you're just gonna be crossing each strand back and forth, okay? Now you can probably guess, since we did the acid purple last, it's gonna be the black one. So you're gonna take the black, and you don't know if you do it wrong because it won't work. So now we're taking the, bot the bottom one, always goes over our top one. So just like this, always goes over the top one. And then it just separates, okay? Since we did our black last, now we'll do the acid purple taking that bottom one and bringing it over the top of the top, uh, taking the bottom one and bringing it over the top one, crossing them over. All right, you'll just continue this all the way down. I'm probably gonna do mine about 16 inches or so. I'll measure it out and see what it ends up being. But yeah, so you'll just keep doing each color back and forth, just like so, and you'll get the hang of it. It's pretty easy once you get that fir those first few done. So just keep going over. And like I said, you'll know if you'll do it wrong. Actually, I'll go ahead and show you here. See, actually, just then, it didn't do right. But if you take it and you were to cross the top one over the bottom one, it wouldn't work and it's going to mess up. So, yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you tie it. And if you just keep going, work your way down to the bottom. And like I said, I'll tell you how long mine ends up being. And you can try to make yours about the similar length. All right, so mine ended up being about 13 inches uh, down so that's you know three inches off of 16 so quite a bit different but um so how we're gonna finish this off is I'm actually gonna take apart my purple one here and we're gonna straighten it out so I'm gonna straighten out my purple all right and so we should still have our loop with our black and we're gonna start with a left side cover knot so taking that left strand going over the top of our acid purple there in the center and now with our right strand, it's going to go over the top of that left one. So it should look just like this. All right. So we did, they, they were just crossed. And we just took apart our purple and straightened them out. Now with the left strand, it went over the center. Right strand is going to go over that left strand behind. So this right here is going to go behind and up through this loop on the left. All right. You just cinch that up. Pull your purple through. Get it nice and tight, and there you go. So get it how you want it, which that actually right there, that looks pretty good. And so there you go. So now we can start tying all of our Cobra knots. So I'm gonna do this about the width of my hand. So I'm gonna tie about probably like maybe two extra Cobra knots, or maybe even three, slightly wider than my hand. So I'll tell you how long that ends up being. So now, since we tied a left-hand cover knot, we're just gonna start with our right strand. So all I did was make a loop and go over the top of that center. So off to the left. Now with that left strand, it's gonna go over the top of that right strand, behind, and up through that loop on the right. And I'll cinch that up. Now since that was a right side cover knot, we're gonna go ahead and, and so, when you're tying cover knots, you always start with the side. So you start your loop with the side that has the loop going around both. So this time, the side has the loop going over both sides. So we're gonna start with that left um, strand over the top, making a loop. Now with our right strand, it's gonna go over the top of that left strand, like so, behind and up through that loop on the left. All right, so now you can see our cobra knot has the loop on the right side now. So that's the side we're gonna start our loop over the center. So over the top, off to the left. Now that left strand is going to go over the top of that right strand, behind, and up through that loop on the right. All right, so you're just going to continue these all the way down until you get the length you want it. So I probably wouldn't go too much longer than about five inches or so with the amount of cord we have, and I'll show you what to do from there. All right, so our last knot is slightly different here. So I got it about an inch on either side of my hand, which is how big I made my handle. So like I was saying, our last knot is going to be slightly different here. So what you got to do is just go ahead and start the same motion of tying your cobra knot. So like this, but don't cinch it up all the way because the side, let's see which side is it. Okay, so this side is the one with our loop. So the side 
the strand that you have over the top is the one you're going to use. So what you want to do is you want to bring that back around over the front and stick it back through itself, going off to the right with the uh, strand on the right. All right, so then you'll just take it and cinch it up like so. And just get it nice and tight, pull in both strands nice and firm. And you can pull them together. Just like so. So yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. Should look just like this. So you got both strands coming out the same side. And then we can go ahead and snip it and burn it down. And then we can move on to our next step. All right, so for mine, I decided to do something a little different. I was gonna use an S beaner instead of a carabiner. And so using the side that we melted down facing towards us, we're gonna go ahead and take our strands and pass them both through the front. All right, now give yourself some room here to be able to pull. We're gonna start with that right strand. So let's put our left strand off to the left. Now with that right strand, we're gonna go through the center of both those strands. And pull that slack all the way through and off to the right. All right, now we're gonna go around the back of the carabiner and down through that loop again, making a cow hitch. Now don't worry if you didn't get that one because we're about to do it again with this left side. So I'm gonna do it a little slower this time. Now taking that left strand, we're gonna go up through the center. So you should have it looking just like this, crossing over that, crossing over to the left. All right, now we're gonna take it, go around behind the back and don't pull it all the way through like this to where you don't have any room. Give yourself some slack here. Take it and stick it down through that loop. All right, now cinch these up tight against your Cobra knots here. All right, now once you get those as close as possible, we can go ahead and start tying Cobra knots over the Cobra knots we've already tied. All right. So taking that right strand going over the top off to the left, just like you know we've done before. We're just gonna tie a right side cobra knot and tying it right over these other ones. Now get that as close to the top as possible. Try and cover up um, the little bit you've melted down there. And let's get this a little further up here on this right side. All right. Then we're gonna go ahead, actually that slipped a little bit under there. There you go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tie a, another one. So this time starting with the left strand going over the top off to the right. That right strand is gonna go over the top of that left strand behind and up through that strand or that loop on the left. All right, now that one right there should cover up the part we melted down where you can barely see it now. And then we're just gonna keep going down until we get to the end. By end, I mean end of our cobra knots right here, stopping right here. All right, so now I'm down here on my last one. So go ahead and tie it. And there you go. So now we can go ahead and snip and burn the ends. And we don't have to do like we did for the black up here. We can just go ahead and snip them where they are and burn it up. All right, moving on to the last strand. So it's nice to have a pair of hemostats or um, a fid might work um, or a pair of not or knotters tool, I mean, to get it through. Uh, but also needleless pliers works just as good as the hemostats. So taking our strand here, we're gonna find, we're gonna get the ends and find our center point. So just slide your fingers through it like we did before. All right, and I'm just gonna set this down for a second because we gotta work our hemostats through this bottom one. So Staying on this side where you can see the front of the cow hitches and not the back side of them, we want to see the front side. So we're going to flip this upside down and we're going to stick our hemostats through this bottom one, the very last one you tied. Be careful not to pull it on too tight or too hard, I mean, to pull and because you don't want to pull these other ones out. All right, now we already found our center point. So we're going to take that loop, we're going to pinch it with these hemostats and pull it through. There you go. Now let's just straighten this back up a little bit. 
And so now we're just making another cow, uh, another cow stitch. So with this loop, we're gonna take both of our strands and go down through that loop right there. All right, and so just pull that nice and snug up against that last loop you made. All right, so once you get your cow stitch nice and tight, facing towards you, you might have to pull on either strand to get it tied up against there. Um, we're going to flip it back around come, uh, to this end with both of our strands going facing the top. All right, so we got it looking just like this. All right, now starting with my right strand, it doesn't matter which strand you start with, I'm going to get my hemostats again, and I'm going to go through that very top strand, uh, through the top and through the top strand. <laughs> so right through here, and we're just going to take that right strand of mine and pull it right through. I have to twist it around since I pinched it kind of crazy. There we go. Unclip, unclip these. And there's the right strand done. All right, now do the same with the left. So going through the top again. We're gonna pinch that left strand and pull it through. All right, just pull this all the way through. Okay, so now before we start tying cobra knots over the top, we're gonna loosen this up a little bit and slide your hand in, whichever hand you plan on using this with. Okay, so I'm gonna slide my hand through it this way. So I got it, uh, my carabiner on the right side. So I'm gonna slide my hand in this side, okay? So you wanna give yourself a little bit of room in here. You don't want it to be nice, you don't want it to be tight against your hand. Editor here. It was at this point, I had already been working on it for a few hours, just, you know, from taking breaks, going to eat lunch, and, you know, doing certain things. So I was getting pretty tired, and by the time I got done making it, I realized it was actually a little bit big on my hands. So do get it not too tight along the top of your hand, but do get it snug if you have an inch on either side of your hand from the handle before. And that'll work perfectly and should fit perfect. Okay, so let's bring our left strain off to the left, keep our right strain on the right. And now we can start tying our cobra knots. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So just over the top, and just like we've been doing this whole time, I'm gonna start with my right strand and go over the top, make a loop. That left strand is gonna come over the top of that right strand and behind and up through that loop on the right. All right, let's go tighten it up. And the first one might look a little bit weird, but it'll be all right because we're going to tie the double cobra like we did on this back one. So just continue tying your cobra knots all the way down. And then we're gonna go back the other way and do the double cobra. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay, once you make your way down here to the end, we're gonna go ahead and tie another one or two over this cow stitch right here so we won't see it. Or at least so it doesn't look so skinny when we tie, you know, the double cobra over the top. So I'm gonna tie me another one, see what that looks like. Make sure to get them nice and tight over this cow stitch so that it looks the same size. As you can see, it looks about the same size as the rest of it when it went over the cow stitch. I'm going to tie me another one just to try to get it a little closer. Also getting that one extremely tight to make sure it looks the same size. Because as you can see, it is not. All right, and there you go. Just about met up to the bottom. So you can tie another one if you want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn back around going the other way. So got my SB near right here. And so this is the bottom of it. And we're gonna start coming back this way. So pretty much you're just gonna keep tying uh, more Cobra knots. So starting with the, let's see, starting with the strand that has the knot right here. So that'd be the left strand. And we're gonna just keep tying Cobra knots back this way. So get them as far down as you possibly can. So as close to the bottom as you possibly can. And then just keep coming back this way until you get back to the end. All right, so I made my way back down here to the end. As you can see, <laughs> I just had just enough cord and I wanted to get one more in there, but I ran out of cord. So that's all I got right there. So we can go ahead and snip and burn our ends. And next time I know to add another five inches or so <laughs> right there. So, but yeah, I still like it though. Uh, it's a good, solid monkey's fist so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and burn these ends down and see what it looks like and there you have it the a-ball monkey's fist so now you got a nice nice groove for your hand here got the carabiner on the end or mine's an s beaner and uh you know you can clip it on your bag if you need to and yeah there you go it's pretty nice 
It's nice and snug along my hand, and I'm really happy with it. I hope you were able to make this. If you have any problems or anything that you needed help with, just let me know down in the comments, and I will definitely help you out. Because I know this one's really tough to make, you know, not even the monkey's fist itself, but also cinching it up, tying the diamond knot. Maybe even you had trouble with the braid. I'm not sure. But if you have any trouble, let me know down in the comments, and I'll help you out. But yeah, there you go. That's it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Later.